And that is a success. Okay, we're back on the slab surfacing machine and I hit a snag. The Arduino microcontroller is really unreliable. Um, it, it goes down one way and then before it gets to the end, it, it reverses itself anyway. And sometimes it'll sit there and go back and forth and back and forth. And, uh, and I'm not sure what's wrong. I did invest some time trying to put some delays in the code to kind of debounce the switches, but there is definitely something wrong and I, I need to get this thing done. So I'm regrouping and we're going to go with a completely different scheme on how to change the direction. We're going to use actual limit switches and uh, to make it adjustable I'll just have a flag that hangs down and the flag can be moved anywhere along this rod. So the way this will work is I'll have this rod in here and I'll have it spring-loaded to keep itself off the switch. We'll have the switch down here at this end, the flag will move somewhere along this rod and that will be uh, the movable limit. So if we want the router to travel all the way out to here, we'll move the flag all the way out to here and it will clamp this rod and then actuate the limit switch. One thing I want to point out is you see this nut has these notches in it. Those are there so this wheel can pass through the nut. Because of that, I'm going to have to make those same notches in these mounting plates. You know, when it comes to making things, it's always the little things that stand in people's way. Like making those notches in that piece of steel. That would have been a real stumbling block for some folks. Okay, so we'll start by just fishing the wire down that tube. And we'll just pull it right on through. <clears throat> now install the grommet. Now we'll just solder a couple of screw lugs on there and attach it to the switch. Now this crimper will hold the connector onto the end of the wire, but I don't trust it, so I always solder it. And here we'll do the same thing again, just fish the wire on in, grab it with something, a hook of some sort, then put the grommet on. For the grommet on this hole coming out the end, I couldn't find a grommet that size, uh, but I have this which is off an old angle grinder. It's the strain relief off the power cord. I think I'm going to just kind of cram it in there and that will keep these wires from rubbing against the steel so they won't ever wear through. And that should work just fine. Ideally running this hole running all this wire through a conduit would be the best way, but uh, I'm just going to tap a couple of holes and put uh, wire clamps on there. Okay, so here's the spaghetti mess of wiring. And the power supply is the same as it was before. Uh, you turn on this switch down here, uh, one of these powers on the router, the other one powers on the power supply. That feeds AC voltage into the transformer, which gives us 24 volts AC out. That goes over here to a full wave bridge rectifier. That turns the AC into DC, and it comes back into this side as 24 volts DC. From there, it goes into this circuit here, which is a bunch of jumper wires, relays, and, and the switches that we installed on the frame. Now let's go take a look at how all that works. Okay, here's how this thing works. We have the motor hooked up to the two common pins of relay number two. The normally closed set are tied to the positive and the negative, but then the normally open set are also only in reverse polarity. 
When the system gets power, it sends voltage through the normally closed set of contacts on relay 1 over to the coil on relay 2. That energizes the coil and engages the normally open set of contacts. This causes the motor to turn clockwise. When limit switch 1 is engaged, this energizes relay 1 which kills power to relay number 2 and reverses polarity to the motor. This also energizes limit switch number 2 which keeps relay 1 energized. When limit switch 2 is engaged, this cuts the power to the relay, sending the system back to the starting mode and again reversing polarity to the motor. Now we'll turn on the power supply. We're at 31 volts, but there's no load on it. We'll come down here and hit the limit switch, and it should change to minus 31, and it did. Come back here and hit this limit switch, and it goes back to plus 31. So this circuit is working. There are only a few things left on the gantry part. One thing is on the slide we have to build some sort of arm that will engage these uh, limit switches at the ends. And I'm going to make that from this piece of 3 16 bar. I've already drilled the holes, tapped threads into the bar. Then we'll just bend it up and bend it over. That way, uh, it, uh, even if this flops around a little bit, uh, it'll still engage. The other thing we need to do is, uh, over here I made a grommet for the, uh, to pass the wire for the power to the motor through. And we'll stick that through. Uh, but I need to interface to the motor, and I thought I was just going to solder to that spring tab there, but turns out that's stainless steel, and they don't like the idea of being soldered to. So I'm going to have to open this up and see if I can find a, something I can solder the wires to. So this chain carries half the voltage, and the uh, sheet metal carries the other half, and uh, we're going to be reversing the voltage uh, through uh, switching the relay back there. Uh, but all I did, uh, the, the way the original did it is uh, there's a spring in here that clamps onto the end of this spring bracket and it just sandwiched that piece of stainless steel in between there. Uh, so I just got a big round lug and put that in the very same way. And then uh, just a sheet metal screw into the rail. And then I'll uh, use a couple of uh, spade connectors to connect to the other half. So now I'll just put this all together, wire it up, we'll actually test it. Then we'll go ahead and install it on the table. Okay, so here it is. Now we've got this adjustable limit here. It slides, slides along here so the thing doesn't end up cutting air all the time. And right now I've got it set up to cut about a two foot wide path. It should go that way first, hit the limit, reverse, hit this limit, and go back. And that is a success. Now if I wanted it to go wider, we just slide this, we just slide this movable detent all the way out. And it looks like the effective usable range is about 50 inches wide. So the gantry system is complete and it works just the way I thought it was gonna. And uh, yeah, it's got the adjustable width so you don't have to spend a lot of time cutting air. About the minimum distance you can go though is about 18 inches. And the fact of the matter is if your slab is that small, you probably do it by hand uh, with a regular router anyway. So the gantry system is done, it works, it's tested. Now we're ready to get over onto the table. Now on the table what we need to do is mount tracks for this to go on. Uh, make an elevator to raise the slab up into the blade because none of this is adjustable and put some sort of linear drive actuator on it and I'm pretty sure I'm going to use one of those screw drive garage door openers and just put a hand crank on it because as I said in the last video I don't think I want this thing being left unattended because uh, if it can be left unattended it probably will be left unattended and then it might break and then I'll have to fix it. So let's get the table in here and see how much trouble that's going to be. Now on the bright side, this thing is relatively easy to roll. But it weighs a lot. One thing I want to do first is get all this extra stuff off here that I'm not going to be needing. Like these fans. I don't know if you can read that, but this thing was built by the C.R. Lawrence Company. 
for the Blomberg Window Company, and that's who gave it to me. So everything in the shop is on wheels. I don't know how familiar you are with the layout, but there's a three bay garage here and a two bay garage next door. And the entire two bays of this three bay side is filled with everything that I had to roll over there to make space for this one thing. Now I've been kind of procrastinating on this job and the reason is this right here. This last phase where I have to uh, mount rails along this table and uh, mount the gantry on it, build an elevator down here to raise the slab up into the blade. And I got no space to work. So this is, this is going to be a lot of wheeling it in, fitting, welding some stuff in place, wheeling it back out. Well now that I've made that bold move of actually getting it into the work bay, I'm gonna have to get this thing done so I can get it out of here. One thing that's really interesting, if you've been with the project from the start, and I'll leave a link to the first video up here, um, I built the gantry 25 years ago, and I got the table four months ago. And coincidentally, the width between those wheels is exactly the same as these two top rails on this table here. So, what a stroke of luck. Anyway, it's late on a Friday, 98 degrees in the shop. I think I'm going to call it good for this week. Um, I do want to uh, make mention of a couple of people, Stephen Ropp, who turned me on to the people that had this, uh, these tables, uh, and that was Blomberg Window Systems. I want to thank them for giving me these two tables, because uh, they, they not only gave me this one, but another one just like it. And uh, guess what I'm going to do with that. Next episode in the Slab Surfacing Saga is going to be the last episode. We will build the elevator table, mount the rails, install the drive system, and surface some wood. So that's all for this week. Thanks for stopping in. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.